Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome everyone to the Coast Area School District School Board meeting for Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. I'd like to draw your attention to agenda item 1B, reading of the mission statement. The mission of the Coast Area School District, rich in diversity and committed to excellence, is to create innovative educational experiences which are funded by the taxpayers, supported by the community, delivered by dedicated teachers and administrators to ensure all students will become responsible, contributing global citizens. Agenda item 1C, advisement. By notice of the president, board members are advised that all votes shall be regarded as roll call votes. The minute should also note that public notice was given for this meeting in accordance with Act 93 of 1998, Section 1. School board meetings shall proceed in accordance with school board policy. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Rob Fisher? Here. Brandon Roan? Here. Harvell Brown? Here. Holly Charest? Here. Andrew Finkbonner? Here. Becky Harlan? Here. Mary Ann Harris? Here. Amelia Mills? Here. Jennifer Schott? Here. Alicia Hudnell? Here. Allison Shrivert? At this time, if we could all stand to observe a moment of silence, followed by the presentation of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Color Guard, present the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <clears throat> Moving on to agenda item number two. To my colleagues, are there any additions, deletions, or modifications to this evening's agenda? Any additions, deletions, or modifications to this evening's agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item 3A, approval of the minutes. Recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the minutes for the December 14, 2021 school board meeting subject to any additions, deletions, modifications, or clarifications. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Jen Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. <coughs> Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item 3B, approval of the minutes. Recommended motion. That the Board of School Directors approve the minutes for the December 20th, 2021 special school board meeting subject to any additions, deletions, modifications, or clarifications. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions or comments? 
Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Becky Harlan? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Amelia Mills? <laughs> yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Holly Sheriff? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item 3C, approval of the minutes. Recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve the minutes for the January 11, 2022 special school board meeting subject to any additions, deletions, modifications, or clarifications. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Holly Sheriff? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Motion approved. So this evening, ladies and gentlemen, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll move things around and, and change the order a little bit. We have quite a large number of students here from North Brandywine and uh, to uh, do a presentation for us this evening. And since tomorrow is the school day, young people, we want to get you home early so you can get to bed early and up bright and early for school tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Hanna, or Mr. Hanna, I'll turn it over to you and you can uh, introduce the administration. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, North Brandywine Middle School in the house. Excellent. I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Eugenia Roberts and Dr. Lambert to, to introduce our, our young people. Um, you know, when we say have young people come, guess what happens? People come. So thank you very much, Dr. Roberts. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Eugenia Roberts, the proud principal of North Brandywine Middle School. I am so excited, so excited that you're out here this evening. Yes. So it does my heart good, and I'm so proud. It's either what they say, go big or go home. So we are here to represent North Brandywine Middle School, located right up the hill on Reeseville Road. Yes! All right. So I have school board family, fantastic students. Thank you, parents, for coming out. First, I want our band to come up and take their seats. The band has not practiced in about two years because of COVID. And when we had our winter concert, I said to Dr. Lambert, the assistant principal, oh, when we have our board presentation, they've got to play. Mr. Nickel is going to come up and introduce the song. While he's coming, Ms. Manji is our band teacher, chorus teacher, mini singers teacher, one period orchestra teacher, and drama advisor. She does it all. Thank you. Our opening composition, The Hawks of Revenge, is based on an old Japanese folk song from around the 16 to 1700s about a trip to a shrine. The composer, Patrick Burns, included these old lyrics in the score. By that side lane to Inari Shrine, one sen was offered. Prayed hurriedly, then to the tea house. When I sat down, they offered bitter tea. I glanced askance. Was it rice cake? Was it dirt cake? Cake, cake. This is cake. Shall I give it to the dog? Shall I give it to the cat? At last, by a hawk, it was snatched away. Thank you.
parents to have students to get involved with the band. So this is our seventh grade representation and we are so proud. Next, we have a slide presentation and we are gonna focus on our English language arts. So we have the, you, next slide, the MTSS structure at North Brandywine, which is the multi-tier system of support. So the MTSS is daily for 30 minutes, either at the beginning or the end of the period. And we have nine periods a day. Each English language arts teacher has three MTSS groups per day. The reading specialist has five MTSS groups per day. Special education teachers have six MTSS groups per day. This is new and we're loving it. However, it is a lot of time that is involved and invested. Next slide. Our fall benchmarks and placement are Acadians benchmarking and the NWEA MAPS growth assessment for fall was conducted in September of 2021. The Acadians benchmark measures reading comprehension through silent reading and the use of maze as an oral reading fluency based on student scores. The NWEA MAPS growth assessment measures three categories. The reading informational text, reading literature, vocabulary acquisition, and use. After Acadians benchmarks, there's two additional assessments. Core phonics survey, rewards pretest were administered to students in decoding. Now the students scored well below during these two assessments and were given pre-reading surveys. The groups were then determined based on the data presented from all assessments. Next. So the students in the MTSS, there were 35 students were serviced during MTSS time by the reading specialist. 31 students were serviced during MTSS time by the special education teams. Three students were serviced during MTSS time by the English Language Arts Department teacher. Additionally, the students in the general education settings utilized the Lexia Learning Program with general, general education teachers. During MTSS time, students in the general education settings are providing individualized instruction from the Lexia Learning Model Lessons, as well as additional writing instruction. The Lexia Learning Program is utilized in the general education classrooms and focuses on three areas of fundamental skills, grammar, and comprehension. The students have individual pathways based on an introductory placement assessment. Next. So there were six students have improved to the seventh grade level in progress monitoring that are currently meeting with the reading specialist for fluency. There are two students that have improved to the sixth grade reading level in progress monitoring for fluency. 13 students have improved to the fifth grade reading level in progress monitoring for fluency. Next. So this is the data that I think is very interesting. So when we look at our student growth and improvement in Lexia, the data below illustrates the percentage of students in seventh grade that have improved by one full grade band in fundamental, intermediate, and advanced. So 19% of the students have moved into intermediate or advanced for word study. This means that for the fundamental, they moved from 60% down to 40%. The intermediate moved from 38% up to 46%. The advanced moved from 2% to 13%. For the grammar, it was 14% of the students have moved into intermediate or advanced for grammar. That equated to fundamental decrease from 65% to 51. Intermediate went from 29% up to 39% and the advance went from 6% to 10%. For the 16% of the students have moved from into the intermediate and advanced for comprehension, which equates to the fundamental went down from 38 to 22%, which is great. The intermediate went from 59 up to 63%, and the advance went from 3% to 15%, which is awesome. Next slide. The Acadians winter benchmark measures, 62 of the students have increased a level based upon the academic benchmark assessments in the maze and silent reading measure. 
35 of the students have increased a level based upon the Acadians benchmark assessment in the oral reading fluency measures. So we are absolutely hoping that with everything that we have in place, the commitment from the students, the commitment from the parents, the commitment from the teachers, that hopefully we can get off the improvement plan. <laughs> so that's what, we're, that's what we're excited about. Now, let us focus on our wonderful students who we are so proud of. So if, if Mr. Fisher could come down and Mr. Hanna, if you could give a pound to the students that we're gonna recognize. And the first group, and Dr. Lambert, I'll need your assistance. Okay, the first group is in reference to writing. So this is a certificate of achievement that certifies that this certificate is proudly presented to the students for demonstrating continued academic excellence in writing. Now some of our students could not make it, but we're gonna call them anyway. The first is Nyla Benson, Oriana Harris, They're going to come up. Carson Hutch. And you can give a pound to Mr. Hanna and Mr. Fisher. Jenna Peoples. Jenna, Jenna, you forgot Mr. Fisher. <laughs> Jaycea Reeves. You can clap. And Benjamin Whiteman. All right, those are our great writers. Now let me also give a shout out. Mr. Whiteman, please stand. His birthday is today but he came to support his son. Thank you, thank you. This is the biggest party you had, right? <laughs> All right, next we have our Lexia students. And their certificate will read. Certificate of Achievement. This certifies, uh, this certificate is proudly presented to the student for outstanding efforts in Lexia. Okay, we have Darvin D. Leon Zap Zapata. Celia Hales. Priscilla Mallow. Jason Ramirez. Callie Rusky. Viva Tran. Now, let me tell you, Viva has completely finished the program. She completed 712 units. Let me also go back, and I forgot. Um, Callie, Callie, raise your hand, stand up. Callie finished 663 units. Jason, Jason completed 562 units. Priscilla finished 441 units. Celia finished 434. And Darwin, where's Darwin? 633 units. Now, Logan Webster. Logan finished 610 units. You have Nyla Tran? Okay, let me read hers. Okay, now I have Nyla Tran. Nyla Tran, come up. Nyla, this is a certificate of honorable mention. This certificate is proudly presented to Nyla Tran for being an exceptional student 
in critical and creative thinking and an exceptional entertaining writer. Thank you. Okay, so next we have some outstanding, outstanding athletes. So, you can take that off. Livia Abernathy. Yes. Now, we're seventh grade, so seventh grade is when intramural starts. I'm sorry, board, that I have my back to you. That's when seventh grade sports starts. She was our only field hockey player for North Brandywine. So she played with the eighth graders. Also, while she's here, Lynn, um, Lainey Taylor and the faculty manager, Miss Luciani, because we didn't have enough players, they then invited Lionville, Penns Grove, Chichester, um, Stanton, Peyton, Patton, they all wore Coatesville uniforms to play because we didn't have enough players. So we thank those additional teams. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next I need Max to come up. Maxwell. Hiller and Tupin. I don't believe Tupin could make it. Okay, stand here, Max. So Max and Tupin, at the end of November, Max and Tupin's football team won their regional New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania championship, and in December qualified for the 2021 Pop Warner Super Bowl National Championship event in Orlando, Florida. They won, yes, thank you, the national championship game against uh, Sea Light Beach Seahawks from Florida with a score of 25 to 20. In the 64th annual Pot Warner Super Bowl in Orlando, Camping World Stadium. Congratulations for being a national champion. Uh-oh, he's plotting. <laughs> All right, so Jillian. Jillian Wimmer. Now, I have to, I was, I, I have to read this whole thing because this young lady is amazing. She's not going to like it, but she's going to have to stand here. All right, her parents, please stand. Come down for a moment. Just come down. Mr. and Mrs. Wimmer, hurry up. Date Parisa. Because they have been a part of Jillian's life, and it was not for them, Jillian would not be in the position that she's in. Um, but one day, she's going to be very successful. So let me read. Jillian is a seventh grader at North Brain and Wine Middle School, recently participated in the Select 30 National Softball Training Camp in Florida. She was chosen to participate after being recognized as the top 12 I'm sorry, top 12-year-old athlete during a national-level tryout last year. She played in Florida with over 100 other elite class of 2027 softball athletes from across the nation. Jillian was also selected as one of the top 30 players and participated in the Select 30 All-Star Game where she hit a solo home run my glasses are fogging up. <laughs> a solo home run, okay, and led her team to the win. Amongst the athletes in attendance, Jillian ranked number seven of the 100 for her skills ability. Her overhand throw has been clocked, check this out, 60 miles per hour. She runs a sub three second home to first, and her bat, exit velocity has been recorded at 66 miles per hour. Jillian is eagerly awaiting her national softball athlete ranking within the class of 2027 from extra inning softball expected by the end of the month. Jillian has been playing softball since she has been four years old and currently plays travel softball for Pennsylvania strikers out of Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Jillian also excels in the classroom with a 4.0.
She is a member of the National Junior Honor Society and recently participated in the District Science Fair. She balances her academics with um, practicing softball and continues five to six days per week and will play softball for the Coatesville seventh grade team starting in the spring. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes North Brandywine's presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ben. Dr. Roberts, while, while Mr. Fisher gets back up here on behalf of the board, thank you uh, for the wonderful presentation. And to the band members, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Dr. Roberts, well done. You. you always bring it big. Thank you. Ms. Maggiano. Did she hear me? No, no, she didn't. Ms. Maggiano. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Listen, I, I, I'm long enough in the tooth to know that you've been around our arts department for a long time, and your dedication to our young students is greatly appreciated by every member of this board. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time we'll move on to agenda item number 4A, public comment on agenda items. The board has requested all persons making comments on agenda items to list their name, address, telephone number, and motion item on the sheet provided. There is a three minute time limit per person. The board does not take action or discuss items not appearing on the agenda. The board values public comments and wishes to convey that although board members cannot discuss items that are not on the agenda, they listen carefully and appreciate and value input from the public. Shelley Durbanis. Uh, my public comment is in regards to um, Edward Kristernick's contract. So I have a friend who is a tax collector in a township that is in, within the Downingtown School District, and he provided me with a letter that, they, that the Downingtown School District sent him because he also does no work for the school district. And I want to read the letter. Dear Mr. Smith, the Downingtown Area School District faces a difficult budget this upcoming year. The Board of School Directors are attempting to reduce expenses as much and, and as whenever possible. Since you do not perform any real estate collection services on behalf of the district, we urge you to waive this compensation as other elected tax collectors have. Please return this letter by whatever date, indicating your decision below. Thank you for considering our request. And then it gives him the options to, I choose to forego my compensation for the 2020-2021 school year and all future years I serve as tax collector. The second option gives him, it says, I desire a check for $830 and have included an updated W-9 form for income tax reporting purposes. I just wanna share this letter with the board. Thank you very much for sharing that. And that is an agenda item this evening, and we are going to pull that from consent agenda for a little more additional information. Thank you. That'd be great. 
Lori Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Um, so just bear with me. Um, this is agenda items, right? Um, at my age, it's kind of hard to keep up with everything. Um, so the human, research, the human resources report, um, I'd like to know what the plan is to replace numerous elementary school staff. Um, I mean, I don't have to list or identify, um, but to me this is concerning. So I'd like to at some point know what your strategy is to replace all of these positions, including a guidance counselor and a school psychologist, uh, school psychologist at um, North Brandywine, guidance counselor at Rainbow. That's one bit of information I'd like to get back, please. Um, another, another point would be the um, policy that's dated May the 16th, 1996. It's entitled Pupils Reporting and Discipline Records Retention. I believe, Mr. Hanna, you said that this policy may have not been updated since 1996. I'm not sure, I'm not putting words in your mouth. But I did speak with the prior board member and um, she assured me that this policy had been updated. Uh, since prior, since after um, uh, 1996. And Ms. So, Shannon Bailey, that is not on the agenda this evening. Oh, the policies are not on the agenda? Okay, I, I apologize. <laughs> no, I no need for, for apology. I just want to let you know they okay. are not on well, the agenda. Okay, well, I, you know, at my age, you know, you just, you can't, you have a hard time keeping up with things. Um, so in terms of the, um, the finances, I wanted to ask, I wanted to follow up on the contract with the, um, the roofing contract, we talked about that the last time. Is that not on the, on the agenda either? I don't want to waste time. This was the 200 some thousand dollar contract um, for a section of the roof at North Brandywine. Okay, awesome. Um, how about the adjudications? Okay, great. Thank you very well. Not great, but um, but thank you very much. Um, so, for for uh, clarity, I want to know how you all are specifically working with the community uh, to help these students. I did mention um, the PAC one nine three two zero tonight. I am mentioning the um, um, the organization that's fairly new that the district attorney is involved in, and so is Chief Lawfer um, of the Coatesville uh, City Police Department. The um, Youth Aid Panel, that's the word I'm looking for. So that's a program that I'm hoping that you all are connected to. Um, one of the concerns I have is that parents have to be involved, and we know that a lot of parents are not supportive of these children, unfortunately. Um, and so I'd like to know, specifically, are you all reaching out intentionally uh, Mr. Hanna, I know you mentioned um, how the PAC 19320 um, could essentially uh, help a lot of students, but my concern, um, and I believe a lot of people are concerned about these students that are adjudicated. When students are not in school, they are not learning. And um, I know that some of these students are being um, expelled for the entire school year, which is very, very disappointing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Shannon Bailey. Moving on to agenda item 5A, executive session. An executive session was held on December 20th, 2021, January 10th, 2022, January 24th, 2022, for legal and personnel reasons. In addition, the board of directors met on January 8th, 2022 for a board retreat. Moving on to agenda item 6A, student representatives report. Ladies. Good evening, I'm Alasia Hudnell, your senior student representative. I would like to start our portion of the student report with an announcement I know all of my fellow seniors are very excited about, which is that Friday, January 21st, was the end of the second marking period, meaning there's only 90 more days until graduation. I'd like to continue our report by acknowledging the robotics team and all the hard work they have put into their competitions for the past five months. Saturday, January 22nd, was the Raider Bot's second meet of the year, where they placed with a very solid third place finish. Congratulations, Raider Bots, and good luck on the rest of your season. To conclude my portion of the student report, 
I'd like to announce the start of our ski club program for the 2021 and 2022 school year. The ski club took their first trip this past Friday, January 21st, and has many more planned throughout the winter season. We wish you a safe and fun-filled ski season. This concludes my portion of the student report. Thank you. Good evening. I'm the junior class representative, Allison Shirek. It is crazy to believe we are already halfway done with this school year. With the third marking period underway, we encourage students to get involved and finish the year off strong. We are looking forward to the spring season and the many year, end of year activities. Some recent activities on campus include the Spanish Club visiting Casa Herrera on January 19th. The students enjoyed a wonderful lunch filled with Mexican treats. Student council and class cabinets are planning for both junior and senior prom and all of the wonderful Coatesville traditions surrounding prom. Currently, our winter sports teams are competing. Girls basketball is second in Tresmonts and are on a seven game winning streak. Swimming recently had their first one of the season against Innerborough. Indoor track and field has had great success at their meets recently. While it is important to not rush the present, students have already begun planning for next school year. Course selection for the 2022-2023 school year recently wrapped up at the secondary schools. Students worked with guidance counselors to select courses for next year. Students at the high school also got to choose if they will participate in special programs like Delaware County Community College, TCHS, the Morgan Trucking Internship, Internship and the Teacher Academy. These, great these are great opportunities for our students and we wish those taking advantage of them the best of luck. As we plan for this upcoming school year, we are looking forward to the future in our schools. That concludes my report. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you, ladies. So, Allison, is that uh, do pool liner any faster? <laughs> good. Well, best of luck to you the rest of the season, and uh, good luck to the the rest of the student body as we embark on the second half of the school year. We'll move on to agenda item 7A, superintendent's report, Mr. Hanna. Thank you, thank you, President Fisher. I'd also like to uh, congratulate uh, the swim team. I had a chance to see them and learned uh, about swimming etiquette. Apparently you're not allowed to clap and woohoo, so I learned that the hard way, so congratulations. Um, very quickly, uh, a couple of things this evening, but I'd just like to start, as the students have said, we have just wrapped up the end of the second marking period, and our students are doing great things throughout the district. Congratulations to Michael Estes, Nathaniel Fink, and James Campbell on being hired at Morgan Truck Body Company as a direct result of their hard work during their internship. We are so thankful to the partnerships in this community that allow for great opportunities for our students to learn and grow. Speaking of partnerships, a shout out goes to Heather Connolly and partnerships at Operation Warmth for donating a new free winter coat to every single student at Reeseville Elementary School. Operation Warm has been operating for 23 years and has gifted more than 4 million winter coats to students in need. Students at the campus participated in pizza parties while the sixth graders at Scott enjoyed an ice cream social after celebrating the completion of 1 million math questions, an initiative provided by the IXL Supplemental Math Tools that increases students' opportunities to learn new math skills. As far as reading, the pilot program Lexia Core 5 has been proven to be most beneficial. Since October, grades K to 5 have completed 165,000 units and have learned 11,000 new skills. Over more than 250 students have moved from below level to in or above. I'm beyond excited to report that our kindergartners continue to improve in their reading levels from 39% to an astounding 77%. Special shout out goes to our teachers, support staff, and reading specialists who make this learning growth possible. We do want to continue building upon our skills, so please join our district in an hour of code on February 2nd, 2022. Our hour of code is making a statement that the Coatesville Area School District is ready to teach these foundational 21st century skills. We encourage you to speak with your children about this great opportunity. We're looking forward to sharing our students' engagement in this event on February 2nd, 2022. And this month, I think you heard Mr. Fisher uh, make, make the announcement dur during the uh, earlier round meetings. This month, the school board and our administrative team gathered for a retreat 
for our current and newly elected board members to give them a crash course on the roles and responsibilities of our key departments and how they collaborate to support schools. In addition, directors discuss their goals, points of pride, challenges, and the ideal state for their departments. Having a clear understanding of the impact to schools of what the board approves is important as board members evaluate their decision making. I would like to thank the board of directors and my administrative team for putting together their presentations and volunteering their time to help. Um, and we do want to remind, remind folks that this is, that this is uh, January National uh, um, Board of Directors Month. So can we give our board of directors a round of applause for their, for their commitment to our district and our community? I'd like to now present a, an overview of, of the work that we're doing in, in, our, in our comprehensive plan. And, and I would point out that a lot of what you heard this evening, hearing from Dr. Roberts and from our students, is, is sort of the comprehensive plan coming to life. Folks, if you could uh, let me share a screen, I'd appreciate it. Patience. Thank you very much. Appreciate your patience. So we'll start out with, and, and this will be available online. So I know I know it's very small, but this will be on the website. So you all can take a look. I first want to thank the, uh, the, the directors who've been, who've been so diligent in making sure that we have an opportunity to share this with you this, this evening. Um, this first slide speaks to the curriculum work that's been done all year since, since last year by all our leaders and teachers to ensure our curriculum is aligned to Pennsylvania state standards. And you can see the action steps that are here. You can also see the progress that's being made. Some of the progress in the action steps speaks to the training that the CCIU has engaged our curriculum writers in. And our curriculum writers are all of our teachers. Our Coatesville area teachers are our curriculum writers. And the board, as you know, a couple of months ago, approved the curriculum cycle. Uh, schools are engaged in piloting programming, and they're very excited about that. You've heard Mr. Pillai and his team speak to those piloting, to those programs. And in the next few weeks, we're really pleased that we're going to be able to determine the program of choice and begin training uh, during our half days as, as, we, as we continue to do this work. This next slide speaks to the work we're doing around STEM, which supports career and technical education and the work that's happening there. Our team continues to conduct an audit of our existing curriculum and resources. There's professional development that based on that audit and the work will be provided for those resources that we adopt, that we decide to take on. And communication is a very important piece of this. Communication is ongoing. You've heard it here at board meetings. We put it in our newsletters, providing periodic updates for, for our community in terms of the work that we're, the work that we're doing. This next, this next slide speaks to STEM. And a minute ago, you heard us talk about Hour of Code. And that's one of the activities that we're engaging here as we do STEM throughout the K-12 to curriculum. With a variety of activities, we talked about an Hour of Code, career plan and exploration. So this goes from kindergarten through, through 12th grade. Um, curriculum writing continues, as does the expansion of partnerships. And you've heard us talk about FLUX, the partnership that we've engaged in where, where we've got students that, are, that are, uh, with, uh, have hydroponic gardens in our, in our schools and have the opportunity to grow diff different things. And I know our teachers have been training uh, and our principals have been training. So that's really brought meaningful opportunities to our students in our schools. Next item is the notion of continuing our partnerships. And we did talk about Hour of Code. We're really proud of the Girls in Technology program where, where fifth grade girls will attend an event at Flux. Uh, it'll be annual, and this is happening from February 21st through 25th. 
Uh, another what thing we're doing is why STEM is important, and that's an essay contest for sixth grade. And winners will also attend a, a full day event at Flux. This is also annually. That's happening January 27th. And again, we're, we're continuing to work uh, to develop a STEM lab within the district, which is part of the work that we've done through the facilities master plan with Siemens. Uh, the initial planning meeting for that work took place January 7th, and we're really excited about that, what that will yield for us as a, as, as a district. Those uh, comments I just made were all about our student achievement goal. This goal is about our school climate and culture goal. And what we're happy to speak to you here is that we continue to review our supports in the area of social and emotional learning. We're looking to implement a social emotional screener for the 22-23 year. And what that allows us to do is, a, is, is have students complete, a, complete an activity and it gives us a sense of like where, where they are and it helps us to be able to provide them with supports with what it is that they need. This will also include professional development for teachers. And I will say to you that we, you've heard the board, we've talked about approving the uh, a contract with the Lincoln Center. And the Lincoln Center has yielded a number of results, such as professional development. They helped us kick off the school year with the professional development for our teachers. We've brought on two climate coaches here at Cash at the high school, and these are, these are folks who, who allow us to allow them, are able to create relationships with students and, and sort of help uh, them as they sort of figure out issues throughout the school. So we're great, it's great that they're on board as well. And the, uh, the, the Lincoln Center allows us to uh, provide an alternative setting for students. So uh, Ms. Shannon Bailey, when you asked about students who were being adjudicated, <coughs> there are students who are able to go to, 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 to the Lincoln Center, to that place, and have an opportunity to sort of in, in continue their learning with the different types of support. So that's, a, that's something we're really proud that we've been able to do here as a district. As we move forward, another culture and climate goal is, are the data teams, right? But that's connected to the academic work. So Ms. George and Mr. Palaya work very closely to ensure that the data teams are talking about academics, you heard what Dr. Roberts presented, right, and the social emotional uh, part of the work. Dr. Roberts talked about the MTSS program. All of that comes together in our data teams where, where teachers are looking at the different types of, of strategies and skills the students need so that they can engage in this work. And the certificates that were provided were for students who were engaging in that kind of work. So congratulations to Dr. Roberts, all of our teachers, and to our leaders here in the district who are, who are helping us with, with that work. The, uh, the next slide speaks to another goal with regard to school climate and culture, and it's the opportunity to conduct an equity audit. And that means taking a look at all of our systems and processes, and are they, are they fair for all of our students? Policies, textbooks, what we're teaching, and things of this sort. That's something that we believe is very important because it helps us here in Coatesville build upon our <laughs> diversity, which we know is a strength. And so we're really pleased to be, able to, to be able to do that work. And we're looking forward right now to identifying a partner who will help us engage in this work and, and sort of drive us as we, as we uh, get better at what it is we have to do. And acknowledge the work of our equity teams that they've done over the last three or four years. We're going to build upon that work as well. Next item uh, is also around school climate and culture, and this speaks to the kind of support students receive on the behavior side, PBIS, otherwise known as Positive Behavior Intervention Supports, and this is an opportunity for students to, to be rewarded, to be acknowledged, to be very clear about what the expectations are and meet those expectations. So teachers are being trained in this work, uh, the, C, the IU and, and Patana are very helpful in this work. What we're pleased about here specifically is that the MTSS work and the PBIS work that we're talking about, we're looking forward to expanding to the campus next year, right? So this work, that, and that's also, we talked about it previously, funded through the ESSERS dollars that we've received. We know that this, you've seen the progress that we're talking about here at the K-5 to and at the middle schools. We're looking forward to, to, doing, to having that progress as well at the, uh, at, at the campus as, as we continue to do this work, led by teachers and school leaders having conversations about students each one by name. Um, and here we're, we're looking at developing a communications plan because we also believe this is part of the, of the school culture piece. And here we've talked about around our schools, which is a great newsletter on our website that we send out every, twice a week. This week we, we launched our internal newsletter for our employees. During our communications audit, our employees said, we like, we'd like to hear more about what's going on, right? And so we, we put that out there for folks. Our principals do Monday morning messages. We hear, we hear about that a lot. In fact, our internal uh, communications is called uh, What's Happening in Raider Nation, 
uh, and our family communication is ar around our schools. And we, we, uh, we're looking to improve, Im improve our social media presence. So we're really happy about those types of activities we're doing. Some of the progress, too, has been around communicating with our legislators so that they're aware of our story so that we continuously tell the story. And we're looking forward to having legislators visit, visit other, other schools of ours as we did back in December. On the financial side, the goal here is to ensure we provide a balanced budget that supports our students. And the first step in that process is, and one of the students talked about it earlier, course selection. And course selection is important because that gives us a sense of what courses do students want, what teachers are we going to need, so that we can begin the process now, so that in the summer we've got everyone we need in place to be able to do this work. And that's something that Ms. Diefenderfer needs to know by the end of February so that she can plan the budget. We're going to do a budget presentation soon, and that's one of our strategies. Here you can see the progress there. Uh, course selection started in January. You heard one of our students speak to that. There's work happening all this month at, our, at the school level. And by the week of February 28th, Ms. Diefenderfer will be knocking at our door saying, where is it? Right? And we want to be able to be sure that, that she has that. Also, implementing a budget that, 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 in, that balances the budget. Here, we continue to audit all of our spending. How are we doing? What does that look like? Partnering with internal and external partners to be sure that we're making the best use of the public dollar, uh, which for us is, is super important. The second item here is, is cost savings that we've, that we've been able to achieve through transportation. And we're pleased to say that our partnership with Kraft has been more helpful. We uh, were able to reduce the, uh, not reduce, eliminate the uh, transfer points without costing an additional cent to the district. So Ms. Diefenderfer, thank your team for that. Very important for us to do without, without increasing our cost to the district. And the transportation team is now working on programs for uh, routing for next year. And uh, we're looking at a number of programs, a web-based program that's going to make that more efficient. We're also looking at, at a program called Bus Patrol, which is going to uh, enable us to put cameras on our on, the, uh, on what are the, the, the arms that come out to provide safety for students, that if there are violators in, out in traffic who violate that, we'll get a picture of them, they'll get a ticket, and some of the proceeds will come to the district. So we're going to try to be a revenue generator as well with that. So Ms. Diefenderfer, thank your team for that, as well as I know Mr. Ga uh, Chief Galbraith is back there, uh, who's been engaged in that work as well. On the facility side, Mr. Pellegrin's here. We talked about our roofs and pools and things of this sort. That's under his, under his leadership. And Mr. Pellegrin, Mr. Pellegrin's role is to ensure that we have a facilities master plan that gives this board an opportunity to make really strong decisions about our buildings and wh what, should we look, what should we be doing in the future. And so this board looks forward to the, to, to the work that's happening there. The second half of this speaks to work that was done this year to uh, increase ADA. Um, that, that is uh, to ensure that there's access to our buildings. And uh, Callan and, and um, East Fallowfield um, Elementary School had their entrances adjusted uh, for, for ADA purposes. And uh, here, uh, Mr. Pellegrin is also working on a maintenance plan. And uh, every now and again, you've heard us sort of get in, uh, have contracts with companies to do preventive maintenance, right, so that we can continue to maintain the buildings we have. Our buildings are not new. And so, for example, one of the, the items was the pool that, 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 was, that we were able to, to have rep repaired and so forth. And there are other items that we're working on as well. Um, and lastly, on, on the, uh, here we're working on, uh, as part of the facilities plan, creating a technology assessment so that we have a sense of what is all the technology that exists in the building. Yes, Chromebooks and ensuring every student has a Chromebook, but what is our inventory so that we're very clear about what this looks like. So the, the IT team is uh, pressing forward with work plans, working with principals to, you know, to, to determine how we're going to collect Chromebooks, how we're going to make sure Chromebooks are cleaned up over the summer, and return back to students as we, as we, begin, the, uh, as we begin the next school year. So there's a lot of work that's happening here. I, I, I want to thank the team for the work they're doing. Uh, and we'll continue on a periodic basis to the board, updating you on what's happening with the comprehensive plan, because this is something we, the board approved last February. We've been hard at work at it, and sometimes we lose sight of letting you know how it's going, even though when we come to board meetings, we're doing the best we can to share with you, you know, what's happening. So uh, with, with that not uh, being said, I just want to thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Fisher, for that. Um, and uh, with regard to the last item was going to be around the health and safety plan, 
right? And I know that's something that we're voting on this evening, and I just want to be able to uh, go through that super quickly because it's it, no changes from, from last time, but I just want to be sure that the board gets one last look before, before we, we, we uh, go to it. Is that, can you guys see that up there? Not yet? You have to reshare. So um, on the agenda this evening is the health and safety plan. Last week, on the, two weeks ago on the 11th, we provided an update. This is an abridged version of that with, with, with recommendations uh, that, that, that we've made that align actually to, to the, to the uh, Chester County Health Department. One of the things around contact tracing, we shared and we shared this with families last week, that the, that the Chester County Health Department has indicated that they're no, long, no longer a need to, we're not authorized to uh, do contact tracing or quarantine uh, a student. So what we're doing is those students who in fact do test positive, they must quarantine, right? But the contact tracing is something that there's just so much of it going on that from their perspective, um, it, is just not, it is just not worth the time and effort. Um, and so, so that, that is something we discussed last week. We as well as the districts across Chester County are, are, following, are following this. With regard to isolation, this speaks to what I spoke to earlier with regard to those students who, uh, or staff, uh, would be required to quarantine if they tested positive. Um, five days in isolation, come back on day six with a mask, um, and, and uh, would be able to come back. No, no worries about quarantining, just isolation. Testing and vaccinations, uh, we will accept uh, the e EUAs, the emergency youth authorization testing, the at-home test for folks when, when, you, when you come back uh, to let us know. And we do want to point out that uh, next week, Monday the 31st, we will be partnering once again, I think it's the fourth time, uh, with Woodland Pharmacy to provide a vaccination and a PCR testing clinic, and that'll be right here at Cash out, out in the outer lobby. This is the area that we use for the 15-minute uh, you know, wait over. On the reporting, uh, we, we uh, are no longer required to submit on a daily basis what we're getting. We will su submit on a weekly basis uh, to the, to the uh, Ch Chester County Health Department. Um, and so just wanted to be sure you're aware of that. So the reporting has gone down dramatically. The data, we're pleased to share with you that since the last time we were together, the data across the county has, it's still high, don't get me wrong, it's still high, but we're beginning to see it go down. You can see the incidence rate per 100,000 was at 1,100 uh, two week, last week. It's at 900 now, so it's still, it is going down. And you can see the PCR positivity rate is also going down. So hopefully we've hit that peak and we'll see, we'll see better news as we, as we move along. Here in the, in the district, you also see the numbers going down. This is through the nine municipalities of our school district. You can see the positive test counts have gone down by a little over 200. And you can see our incidence rates have also gone down. And this is as of data reported on Friday the 21st. And in the last 14 days, there were 112 positive or probable cases in the district. I will say to you that last Friday, that number was at 142. So you can begin to see the numbers you know, coming down gradually. I think that represents a 22% reduction. And other districts across the county are seeing similar types of reductions. These here represent the vaccination rates. And since we last met two weeks ago, uh, each of these has gone up by 2 or 3%. So you're beginning to also see more folks uh, become, become vaccinated. So our recommendation is that all staff and students are required to follow the masking guidelines, which will be on the next slide, in all of our buildings, uh, and it will be dependent upon transmission levels in Truster County. We'll show what that looks like in a second. We will no longer conduct contact tracing. We discussed that last time. Um, and, and in accordance with federal mandate, we still must wear masks on buses. So know that. And the fourth bullet here is that we would continue here at the administration continue to review the uh, transmission rates and make recommendations based on those rates that might require us to come back and alter, and alter the plan. Um, and the rates would look as follows. Um, in the low or moderate area, we're looking at masks optional in essence, right? Um, and you're looking here on the moderate side actually, for K to six, given the vaccination rate is still lower among that age group, we'd be asking K to six when we were in moderate, 
to, to, go at, uh, to, to have masks required. That may be something, board, that we may want to look at as, as the spring rolls around and may want to make an adjustment, right? But for the moment, we, we think this is probably the safest thing to do. The 7 to 12 in moderate would be masks recommended, um, and that is in part because you see the higher number of students who are vaccinated, right? So from that perspective, we'd be, we'd be more comfortable with that. If we were over 100, over 99, we, in substantial and in high, we would still be looking at requiring uh, masks in all buildings and buses. Once again, this is not set in stone. I think it's important for us to sort of keep these safety you know, measures in place, and then as, as time goes, see how, see how things go. Um, I don't know if there are any, any questions, um, but I do want to begin and offer a big thank you. The nurses aren't here today, but folks, when you get, don't hug a nurse because don't hug a nurse yet, but pound the nurse, right? This way, pound the nurse. Thank them for everything they've done. They were here last week. Do we have nurse, a nurse here? No? Yes? Stand up, stand up, stand up. This is Ms. Nelms. Yeah. Patty, thank you. Patty, I'm a, wit I'm a witness. She was escorting a young person who had to go home one day when I was visiting. North. Thank you for all you do, Patty. And please let your colleagues know uh, how, su how supportive we are of them. They've done so much. Our principals have done so much. Teachers have done so much. Everyone has. But nurses in particular, you've really led this charge. So thank you. Is uh, Mr. Smith here? Darren Smith, where, where's, no? Was around? Okay, well, if you see Mr. Smith, pound him too. He's been phenomenal on Central. And Carol, Carol Heindel, Mrs. Heindel, who's our HR director, has been working on the staffing side because this has not, not been a student issue. It's also been staff. So, Ms. Heindel, thank you for what you've been doing. To totally understand and appreciate your work. So, uh, with that said, I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, you know, um, we're pretty much where we were last week. Uh, in fact, probably not, I don't know if it's a better place, but a different place in that the uh, contact tracing has allowed us to reduce the number of students who, who've had to quarantine because of the close contact piece. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. <clears throat> Moving forward with the agenda items, we'll now go to agenda item 7B, important date. February 8, 2022, 6 o'clock p.m., all committees and special meeting, Coach Furrier Senior High School Auditorium. February 23rd, 2022, 7 o'clock p.m., school board meeting, Coach Furrier Senior High School Auditorium. Agenda item 8A, special reports, 2022-2023, school district budget update. Once again, Mr. Hanna and Ms. Stephen-Durfer. Thank you, President Fisher. Good evening, school board directors and members of our community. Tonight, we want to provide a brief overview of the options that are being considered relating to our budget gap for the 22-23 school year. Before we share these options, we will start by revisiting the $9.3 million increase in our debt payment. Ms. Diefendorfer. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. This is a slide that we have shared numerous times and wanted to share again tonight. What we have here is, and we've discussed this before, um, our, debt, our debt payment is going from 7.5 million to 6.8 million. So that is a 9.3 million budget increase that we have to take into consideration as we're moving forward in our budgeting process. Um, that 9.3 million is only the increase that we have in our debt. It does not take into consideration any increases in our salaries or benefits. Um, any charter school costs, regular or special ed cost, or any contract e escalation cost over prior year. So any increases in those areas, we also have to take in consideration as we try to balance our budget. On the next slide, Mr. Hanno will share options that we must consider. The one thing we know for certain is that we must look at options for reducing our budget that have, has the least impact on student achievement. Thank you, Ms. Diefendorfer. So with regard to the options to consider, we must look at the ARP ESSERS funding to help reduce the budget and see how the future spending of those funds can help offset the budget as it relates to COVID-19. It's important to know that the ESSERS dollars must be tied to COVID-19 support efforts. Another area we must look at is if there are options for reducing programming. And if so, which ones can we reduce that have the least impact on student achievement. So this is the notion of keep the cuts as far away from the classroom as you possibly can. 
From a staffing perspective, we cannot exclude this option in balancing our budget. We will continue to monitor our staffing and the costs associated with this area of the budget. If we do find areas in staffing that we can reduce to help balance the budget, we must really weigh these options with the, with the impact on student achievement first and foremost. With regard to real estate, we are obligated to look at our real estate investments and what we can do with the land and assets on that land to help us balance the budget. Like we did in prior years, it is imperative for us to look at how we fill our schools and realign our schools to better fit the needs of our student population while using this option to reduce the deficit. As we consider these options, we must make sure we are not reducing the budget in silos, but rather looking at all possible options and using each of these areas for a more equitable approach and reductions in balancing the budget for the 22-23 school year. With regard to the budget timeline, we wanted to go over the budget timeline once again because as mentioned at our last meeting, the board will need to adopt a resolution this evening indicating they will stay within the index for the 22-23 school year. Over the next few months, we will continue to review our revenues and expenses, have these tough discussions on how we can balance our budget as we look to adopt the preliminary budget in April and our final budget in June. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Hannett. Thank you, Ms. Diefenderfer. Moving on to agenda item number 9A, adoption of consent agenda. Recommended motion that the Board of School Directors approve the consent agenda items. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Committee meeting action items considered routine will be enacted under one motion unless removed for separate action upon board request. The purpose of the consolidated motion is to expedite governing board action on all consent items which are not held for discussion. Items that have been held for discussion by the governing board will be enacted upon at the time the item is discussed. So this evening, I would like to remove from consent agenda, under number 10, Finance Committee, I would like to remove letter A, Financial Statements, letter B, 2022-2023 Budget Resolution. Letter F, Edward A. Pristernick Tax Collector Agreement. And letter N, Human Resources Report. So once again, that is agenda items A, B, F, and N. Under Education, number 11, I would like to remove all the adjudications from consent agenda. That would be agenda items E through K. Again, under education, remove from consent agenda, agenda items E through K. And under number 12, operations, I would like to remove agenda item E, health and safety plan. Are there any other items to be removed from consent agenda this evening? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, I will ask if you will call for the vote, please. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. yes. Motion approved. Chairman Finkbonner, Finance Committee. Thank you, Ms. Fisher. Uh, first up, we have letter A, financial statements. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the financial statements, bills, payables list as presented. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, can we call for a vote? Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Harvell Brown? Jennifer Schott? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. 
Rob Fisher? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Motion approved. Letter B, 2022-2023 budget resolution. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the 2022-2023 budget resolution option B to stay within the 4.4% Act 1 index for budget. As presented, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Um, just as a point of clarification uh, to my, my peers up here on the board, that we are voting uh, at the administrative recommendation that we stay below the Act 1 index to not exceed a tax increase of 4.4%. So a yes vote would mean that you're agreeing to stay below the 4.4%. A no would mean that you do not agree. Any questions? Yeah, explain that again. Yep, so if you vote yes to this, you're agreeing that you're staying below the Act 1 index. So we as a district cannot increase taxes above 4.4%. If you vote no, then either that would be an option of you do not want the taxes to go up at all, or you would much rather go above the 4.4% Act 1 index. So when we vote on this, this would be, um, will another vote come to rather or not to do the tax state? That is correct. Yes. Excuse me? That is correct. This okay. is just to stay between zero or 4.4%. Very good, Ms. Bell. Ms. Harris, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Any other questions or comments? See none, we'll call for a vote. Brandon Roan? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Motion approved. Next up, we have letter F. Edward A. Pristernick Tax Collector Agreement. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the Tax Collector Compensation Selection Agreement with Edward A. Pristernick, elected tax collector for West Brandywine Township. The agreement shall be in effect for four years from January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2025, as presented. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, I'll ask um, Ms. Diefenderfer if you could provide a little bit of context on the tax collector position in the agreement with the district. Yeah, sure. So this is part of the um, Public School Code of 1949, which authorizes the municipal elected tax collectors to collect the school district taxes. So what we have on the agenda tonight is the option for Mr. Pristernick to either collect taxes and all that goes along with that, or to forego collecting taxes and then for giving up that income, the district gives him a commission of, um, I think it's 50, 50 cents per tax tax bill that he processes um, or works with. So that's what tonight is. It's just an agreement allowing the district to provide him a commission for that service. Or giving up that service, I should say. And uh, Mr. Finkbonner, if I may, uh, Ms. Tiefenderver, I think it's important to note that this is a part of the school code. That is correct. So the school district does not have any option but to follow the school code. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or further clarification? See none, we'll call for a vote. Amelia Mills? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Motion approved. Letter N, Human Resources Report. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leave of absence, transfer, change of status, and corrections as presented. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Mr. Finkbonner, if I may, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the uh, Human Resources Report. That would be Section 1, CATA, under Section A, Number 3. It is with regret this evening that we accept the retirement of Patrice Seeger. Patrice was a uh, longtime language arts teacher in the school district, 22 years. Uh, and I believe the largest majority of that, if not all of it, was spent at the middle school level, South Brandywine Middle School, and then now currently North Brandywine Middle School. And uh, uh, Ms. Seeker was a anchor of the language arts department for a long time. Um, a very kind and compassionate woman, uh, and that reflected in her teaching of her students. So it is uh, with great regret that we accept her retirement. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, 
We wish uh, Ms. Seeker the best of luck in her retirement. Uh, we wish her a lengthy, safe, and happy one. And on a final note, uh, it's nice to see a fellow member of the class of 19 <clears throat> uh, be able to move on into retirement. Uh, Ms. Seeker and I uh, graduated together here from Coatesville High School. What year so, was that? What year was that? <clears throat> okay, got it. Just check. So anyway, uh, Patrice, best of luck, and uh, we thank you for your services to the children of the Coatesville Area School District. Thank you, Mr. Finkbonner. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. Amelia Mills? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, moving on. 11E, proposed adjudication student 1001043. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 1001043. Have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Motion approved. 11F, proposed adjudication student 1000083337, that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 1000083337. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Becky Harlan? Yes. Carvel Brown? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Motion approved. 11G, proposed adjudication student 1000-5867. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 1000-5867. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Becky Harlan? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Motion approved. 11H, proposed adjudication student 1000-7352. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 1000-7352. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Motion approved. 11I, proposed adjudication student 1000-8165. That the recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 1000-8165. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Motion approved. 11J, proposed adjudication student 1000-8762. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 
1-0-0-0-8-7-6-2. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Motion approved. 11K, proposed adjudication, student 1001720, recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed student adjudication for student 1001720. Do I have a motion? Motion. Okay. Call for the vote. Holly Charest? Yes. Rob Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Brandon Roan? Yes. Motion approved. Chairman Roan, operations agenda item E. Agenda item E, recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors <coughs> authorize the health and safety plan be revised to include updates aligned to Centers for Disease Control, CDC, recommendations in Chester County Health Department, CCHD guidance, including guidelines for masking, isolation, reporting, mitigation strategies as presented. In addition, the board directs the administration to continue review transmission rates and guidance from the CDC and the CCHD and make recommendations to the board that may result in further <coughs> revisions to the health and safety plan as warranted. The board understands that the actions may have to be implemented prior to board authorization, given the timing of CDC and CCHD guidance. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions, comments, and or concerns? Um, I got concerns. Um, Mike, Mike. Um, they say, I don't understand about the not contract tracing if the numbers are going up now. Last time you said it was going up now, today they're going down. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that, how that is within, we just talked about this. So the, the numbers are, the numbers are going down. The, the uh, health department has, has indicated that given that it is, it is now the, 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 um, the virus is sort of community spread, right? The notion of, of just tracking and doing the contact tracing is, is something that is just, is just too much to do. And so from, from you know, the, the recommendation we're getting is to continue masking, which is, which is, what, we're, which is what we're doing. Um, and, you know, based on the guidelines we have, and right now, given the numbers, we're not, we're not getting rid of masks anytime soon, right? We also, you know, reserve the right to come back to the board with whatever changes it is that, that, we, might have to, that we might have to make. Well, I, one thing I want to make sure that we're not jumping on a bandwagon and then tomorrow it's no masking, because I know this disease is dangerous. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that have underlying conditions, and if we can't contact trace, and when someone gets sick, how do they know where they get it from? And if they don't have to quarantine or isolate, I don't understand how they are gonna know where they got it from. So, so that's, a good that's a good question, Ms. Harris. So the, on, the, um, on the, those who are, who are <laughs> tested positive must isolate. Just, just know that those who come back with a positive result, <laughs> isolate. Uh, the guidance speaks to uh, if you're out, out in public and, and, and you were uh, exposed or you exposed someone that, that you, would let, you would let them know. Uh, from this perspective, it's just something that from the, from the guidance uh, that we're getting from the health department is just, is just not something that we're, that we're in a position to do, that we're not authorized to do pr you know, pretty much. So from, from that perspective, that, that's, where, that's where, you know, things sit right now. I know, that does, I know that doesn't help because you're absolutely right about the underlying conditions and concerns that, concerns that folks have. Now, um, if somebody gets it and you can't say that they're getting it from the outside, 
from the inside of the school and nobody's reporting it because they don't have to from where you're saying, then how is it going to help when the teacher goes in the classroom and the kid, student goes in the classroom and exposes all the classroom but nobody knows about it and then they're walking around up and down the halls and exposing everybody, what are we supposed to do? We continue, we continue to mitigation strategies, we continue to mask up, we also let folks know that if they don't feel well, that they should stay home, right? That, that, is, that, is the other, that is the other part of this in terms of the mitigation strategy, right? The masking, the cleaning that we do, right? And making sure that if you, it's you know, similar to prior to the, to, to the, uh, to the pandemic, if you didn't feel well, you, sh you know, students should stay, you know, students should stay home. We have known people sending their kids to school sick before the pandemic Correct. and for everything else. So what's going to make it change if they, there's no... If I might, Ms. Harris, part of what I think makes a change that makes it different from, from previously is that we've got many more folks who have access to a vaccine. Right, and so for those for those who, who opt to take that option, and we've, we've shared, you know, about 85% of the of the county has at least one vaccination. We're providing vaccination opportunities here in the district, and so that's an, that's another mitigation strategy. I know folks don't all believe in that, but but that is also something that that's available for us to do. If you look at the guidelines with regard to masking, I know that's a concern, given where the numbers are. Like I said, the, the, you know, we're not looking at, at going mask optional or mask recommended anytime, anytime soon, given what the numbers are. Any, any other questions or comments? I just have a quick question for you, Mr. Hanna. Um, as it stands right now, do we have ample rapid tests on hand? We have, we have very, the last batch that we had were, uh, were delivered to, to, the, to, the, to the high school and where uh, Mr. Smith is, is working to, to, to uh, secure more uh, from, from the county. Okay, All right. thank you. Uh, I, I don't have a question, um, but I just, I'll, I'll make a general statement. I, I'm sure much like uh, my colleagues, much like myself have received, received numerous emails um, from, from both sides of, of the, the table, right? Uh, those that want masks removed, most, those that don't want masks removed, the concerns going both ways from, uh, you know, mental health and, and well-being of students with the mask and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I just want to, to publicly state so that the public understands that it is you know, th this conversation uh, probably consumes a lot of thought process along with uh, budget items and, and other things that, that this board has to do business uh, with. And so it's, it's not taken uh, very lightly, as you can see by um, Ms. Harris' concern about, you know, how, how do we now identify and, and things of that nature. So uh, at least uh, publicly want to state so the public understands that um, we, we hear uh, your, your concerns um, on both sides of the, of the aisle. Um, and, and so this is a, between the, the mandates, the recommendations, the guidance, um, you know, personal feelings uh, and, and all the other things that go into it. Um, it is certainly a, uh, not a haphazard uh, decision that, that gets made around this, this topic. So if there are no other comments or questions from my colleagues, um, Madam Secretary, you can call for the vote, please. Brandon Roan? Yes. Becky Harlan? No. Rob Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Mary Ann Harris? No. Amelia Mills? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Holly Charest? Yes. Motion approved. I think that takes care of all the items that we removed from consent agenda this evening. Therefore, we will move on to agenda item 14A, public comment. The board has requested that all persons making comments of public concern to list their name, address, telephone number, and topic on the sheet provided. There is a three-minute time limit per person. Thank you. Folks, I am so sorry, but you're going to have to help me with pronunciation, please.
Come on up, sir. Good evening. Sorry for the bad handwriting. <laughs> um, respected members, good evening. Uh, thanks for your time in advance. My name is Mohammed Jamaluddin, and I'm a resident of Coatswell. I've uh, been here since 2004. I have had the privilege of serving the Coatswell area Muslim community and its neighbors for the 20 years that I have been here in my capacity as a resident, Imam of Masjid Rahman, and the city of Coatesville police chaplain. The Muslim community in Coatesville area school district has been growing steadily in the past two decades. It's an encouraging sign considering how the city has been working to rejuvenate our neighborhood to make it a better place for all of us to live in and grow in. We on our part are investing a million dollars to expand our Islamic center on 723 Merchant Street. So we, have, we can have more room for community building programs and communal bonding activities. We look forward to having you and your team soon for a visit to the new building. I would like to take the opportunity to thank you all for the hard work that you do for the uh, students and the, uh, and the parent community of Coatesville. It's also my duty on behalf of the Muslim community in Coatesville to request your support to include two Eid holidays on the CAST calendars. The, the, you know, the two Eid holidays are the month of Ramadan, the Eid al-Fitr, which comes after fasting 30 days, and then Eid al-Adha, which is, as you must have all seen on, uh, on the social media, the Hajj season, as we call it, when millions throng to Makkah to circumambulate and pray at the house of God. So the proposal, we have submitted a proposal, and I have copies which I can share with you as well. Some of you must have also received emails from our community members. The proposal for CISD is attached, and I can give you a copy here. I thank you in advance for your time and for your kind consideration of our proposal. And the Muslim community of Coatesville looks forward to working with you and your team in your endeavor to promote love, peace, and harmony in the city of Coatesville. I know I heard inclusivity is the need of the hour. Diversity is our strength, and we would like to do our part to do that and support your endeavor there. And integration and social bonding is what we have been working very hard in the last 20 years in Coatesville. When we started to expand our project, Cultural Center here, People were saying, why are you spending a million dollars in Coatesville? We said, no, we love Coatesville. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to grow. And we seek your support. I would be happy to hand over copies of this to you. Thanks once again for time. Thank you, sir. And uh, Yasmin is next. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Yasmin. Um, I lived in Coatesville for about 20 years now. And we have a large Muslim community and students in Coatesville area. Many of them attend Coatesville School District, but they do not get the holidays to celebrate their festivities. So we uh, request you to please consider this and then these are the important tweets for all our Muslim children as well. So all students must get an opportunity to celebrate these festivities. Uh, this will be the right thing to promote inclusivity and the equal opportunity to all. We have already submitted the proposal, board members. We request you to please consider this and include our holidays in your calendar. Thank you very much. That comes to me. Thank you. Ms. Shannon Bailey, let's uh, let, let, let's let uh, Manur go, and then so we're on that topic, and then I'll save you for next, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Manur Siddiqui, seventh grader in the Coatesville Cyber Academy. As a Muslim born in America, one of the biggest things I look forward to each year is Eid. It's a chance for me to celebrate the end of a holy month and also a chance for me to come together with family and friends. The only problem is, most of the time, Eid is on a school day. I've been to my home country before, Pakistan, and it wasn't until I celebrated Eid there a few years ago 
that I realized it was normal for kids over there to not have school on Eid. I'd see my cousin and her friends playing outside, the thought of school the farthest thing from their minds, and I wondered why my school didn't give me that opportunity either. Instead, I'd either have to go to school on Eid or write a note describing why I'd be absent that day. I imagined how much easier it would be if my school gave me a day off to celebrate Eid. If the district decides to put Eid on the school calendar, Muslim kids would get the same opportunity that my cousin and her peers do. We'd be able to enjoy Eid without the worry of skipping school in our heads. Not, on, not only that, but it would encourage more diversity and strengthen the image of the Coatesville School District. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Um, a couple of months ago, I had asked that the board consider the ACT versus the SAT. I'm um, again bringing that to your attention. Um, there is a lot in the media now that many colleges and universities are not requiring the SAT. Um, the ACT is, um, I think, a good option because for those students who may not be really, really strong in STEM or other subjects. My son, for example, was not a strong math person, so we chose the ACT for him and the, a and the SAT for my daughter. So it's just an option. And I do think, um, you know, Dr. Tashner, when she was here, the, 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 the meaning behind that is to support our students. And I agree with that, but I would ask you to consider the ACT um, as, a, as an option as well. Um, someone brought to my attention that a former a uh, Spanish teacher died in the community, um, Milton Cerlis. I'm not sure if I'm saying that Cyril. right. Cyrus. Cyrus. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I wasn't here, obviously, but someone brought that to my attention. And I wasn't sure if you all were aware of that, but um, apparently um, he passed away. He was a Spanish teacher, passed away sometime around the middle of, of uh, January, I believe. And on to the school board, uh, the request for the resolution, the fair funding resolution. I'm still waiting on your written response from that. Um, just so you all know that Coatesville City Council has not, uh, their response is until the school board requests assistance, they cannot support the resolution. So I would like, please, your answer within the, before the next month or so, whether we'll, it's we'll yes or no. We'll give it to no. you right now. Give it to you right now. It, it, oh. will, be on, it will be on the February 8th agenda. I'm sorry? It will be on the February 8th agenda. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, Ms. Shannon Billy. To my colleagues, are there any additional board members' reports or informational items this evening? I have some informational items. Ms. Mills. Uh, well, it was absolutely wonderful to see the kids from North Brandywine, wasn't it? It was we're like we're almost normal again. And month of January, I saw the schools getting back to the regular activities that we're so used to in previous years. Um, I had the good fortune to judge several science fairs this month. And one of the tasks of a judge is to interview each student about their project. Some of the kids are nervous, some of the kids are excited, and some of them are downright chatty. But it's great, and I want to have hats off to the Intermediate High School. Uh, they had remarkable projects. Best recycled watercolor paper, get rooted, how to plant to prevent erosion, and photosynthesis, grow lights versus indirect lights. I want to thank Mr. Alston and all the science teachers at the Intermediate High School. It was a joy to see all those projects and talk to the kids. I had another joy, and that was Rainbow Elementary and judging their science fair. Everything from a kindergarten class of Mrs. Christman doing a group project to kids in first grade through fifth grade. Uh, and I loved it. There was one, caffeine and blood pressure. Wonder who they were talking about. Mom, probably. And there was another one, fruit and vegetable power. I also judged the King's Highway one. The kids were a delight. And I'm glad it's kind of like being normal doing the science fair. But even more normal is January is the district spelling bee. And I want to congratulate all the kids in grades three, four, and five who participated to represent their school and their grade level. All of them are winners. 
but I have to give a special shout out to my next door neighbor, Addie. Addie is the top speller in grade four for the Coatesville Area School District. So January was a great month. I can't wait to see what happens in February with our kids. Thank you. Ms. Mills, thank you for taking the time to share that. Are there any other additional board members' reports or any other informational items this evening? Seeing none, I will ask for a motion for adjournment. Motion. We will adjourn at 841. You're getting better with me, pal.